Welcome to the GameHouse Overwatch League Recap. Being the last day of Stage 1, this will be the last recap until the next stage begins. Now that we've got that cleared up, sit back and enjoy the ride as we recap the games you may have missed. The first match of the day was a battle for the first seed going into the playoffs. The London Spitfire faced off against the New York Excelsior. The first map was Eichenwald, and it lived up to our expectations of high quality play from both sides. We saw the Excelsior's offense fall short of the point on their offensive push, despite some great individual plays. When the Spitfire took to the offense, you know their enemy was immediately on the back foot. However, with New York's legendary defense, you'd expect the match to be close. In fact, it was close. The Spitfire were barely able to pull out the win, but not after New York countered nearly every punch along the way. The assault map for this series was Temple of Anubis. New York showed enough aggressive prowess to push through the first point, but fell short in the second. Don't be too scared if you're a New York fan. Their legendary defense was enough to hold off London, not letting them get a single tick. This meant New York only needed one more map to secure the first seed in the playoffs. The third map took us to Ilios, where Excelsior brought out their trump card, Pine. This map wasn't even close, unfortunately, and showed us just how incredible Pine is at McCree and Widowmaker. The Excelsior went up 2-1 and secured their top placement in the bracket. Dorado was the fourth map, and New York had a slow push in the beginning and were only able to get halfway through the second point, barely hiding the nose of the payload under the bridge. The Spitfire on offense looked ruthless. They had a sloppy engage right out the gate, but once they tightened up, they sped through the first point. The fifth and deciding map was of course Li Jiang Tower. Opening up on the shrine, the first oddity was that Pine wasn't playing. Instead, they stuck with Sabiolbi and Libero. This seemed to work for them as they quickly grabbed 99% and the Spitfire were only able to win a slight bit of percentage. Control Center continued New York's dominance as their patient play paid off and won them the map and the series 3-2. The next match of the day was by far the most important. The Houston Outlaws faced the Boston Uprising in a fight for third place in the final playoff berth. Kicking it off on Eichenwald, we saw Jake on Soldier 76 as the Outlaws' double hit scan strategy took down Boston. Their strategy continued up the ramp and they were able to take the second point before Jake had to switch back to his famous Junkrat. Seeing how dominant Houston was on the first half of their push, it surprised us all to see Boston come through with a hold in overtime, keeping the Outlaws at two points. Boston have had some incredible clutch offenses in the past. Unfortunately for them, Jake's Junk Rat kept the uprising at two points as well, and the Outlaws were able to secure a defensive third point to take the lead in the series one to nothing. The Temple of Anubis was truly a Gamsu highlight reel. Boston were able to hold Houston off the second point and got extraordinarily lucky as Houston somehow forgot to stay on the second point. This allowed Boston to tie it up one to one. Ilios, as it always seems to be, was a fun one. Boston showed us just how dominant they can be and shut down Linkser at every turn. They came out of the map with a 2-1 lead in the series, needing only one win to secure third place in the playoffs. But Dorado showed us a familiar story for the Outlaws, where their offense fell barely short of the last point. Their defense was disturbed early as an unusual bastion by Neko caught them by surprise. It seemed like Boston were relying on their cheesy strategy to work since the Outlaws then confidently defended and took the series to map 5. Unfortunately for Boston, they had to win the series 3-0, 3-1, or 4-0 in order to make it into the playoffs, but from where they started this year, we'd say a close fifth is pretty damn good. Li Jiang Tower didn't lighten the tension at all. While Houston took the first map, Boston grabbed a very quick 99% in the Garden. After a short contest by the Outlaws, Boston brought it to a third and final map. As shaky as the Outlaws looked during the second point, they dominated the final map and just barely punched their ticket to the playoffs. The final match of Stage 1 was the Florida Mayhem and the Philadelphia Fusion. Logic started off strong by helping Florida capture the first point by getting some great snipes on Widowmaker. With a quick opening capture, Philadelphia seemed to continue their poor run of luck on Nubani. However, Florida couldn't quite close it out. On the attack, Philadelphia had a run of great team fights and managed to pull out the first map. Horizon Lunar Colony was next, and Tavik showed us some amazing Sombra positioning. However, it was Philadelphia's error that granted Florida the second point. The Mayhem on defense looked solid and didn't make the same mistake the Fusion did. They barely held the point in overtime and tied up the series 1-1. One one. 
Next, both teams were on their way to Oasis. The control map started off with the Mayhem taking a close first round. While their carries didn't look very convincing, Florida managed to take the map 2-0, giving them a lead in the series 2-1. Junkertown was next, and the Fusion have looked strong historically on this map. However, Florida didn't pull any punches on their offense. They found some great positioning with Roadhog, Bastion, and Orissa, and got the payload quickly to the first point. However, that's as far as they got. Philly's offense started slow, but they eventually got the team fights needed to secure the map and tie up the series 2-2. Two two. On Li Jiang Tower's first round, the Mayhem looked a little desperate. Their team play just wasn't there. However, they stormed back and made the second round close, bringing it to a third and final point. Even the third point was close, but Philadelphia pulled it out and won the match 3-2. With the regular portion of the stage done and logged in the books, we began the first ever Overwatch League Stage 1 playoffs. Because of how the standings ended up, we had the New York Excelsior in the first seed, Houston Outlaws as the second seed, and the London Spitfire sitting at the third seed. The first match of Houston and London was on Dorado. London started on offense and began with a strong push. However, the Outlaws were quick on the draw and stopped them from getting the second point. This meant Houston had an easy time on offense, securing the first map and going up 1-0 in the semifinals. Ilios gave us two very close rounds, but the Spitfire came out on top on both, narrowly tying up the series 1-1. A special shout out to Bird Rings McCree for keeping Houston in check. It seems the best way to fight the Outlaws is with an Outlaw. Temple of Anubis showed why the Spitfire were considered such a powerhouse. The Outlaws had a historically phenomenal record on Anubis, but they weren't able to hold back London's onslaught and gave up both points. In rare form, the Spitfire leveled up their game and held Houston from getting the first point, securing their first lead of the series 2-1. Eichenwald was the fourth map of the series, and the Outlaws gave us an incredible defensive showing from Lynxer and Coolmat. Unfortunately for them, the Spitfire had the clutch factor on their side today, and they managed to grab the point with less than 30 seconds remaining. And while Houston stopped them from getting the second point, London's defense had improved massively over the season, as they very narrowly stopped Houston from getting the first point. With London besting the Outlaws, this meant that the Spitfire would be facing the New York Excelsior in the Stage 1 Grand Finals. The first map of the finals was Junkertown. London took a very measured and calculated offense, slowly chipping away. Eventually, they pushed back the Excelsior at the very last minute and claimed the third point. New York on offense looked nearly unstoppable. With Jonak on Roadhog, they got scrappy and adamantly took the third point. Because of New York's quick execution on their offense, they had a massive time bake advantage and they took care of business quickly, leading the series 1-0. Next up was Oasis. We saw clearly that the Spitfire had immense flexibility and strength on control, making this map incredibly close. However, even without Pine strangely enough, New York ended up taking the win and controlling the series 2-0. At this point, the London Spitfire would have to reverse sweep in order to win. The first chance they had would be on Horizon Lunar Colony. The Spitfire started out with a strong offense, capturing high grounds and looking sharp. Their team play carried over from their attack, but they weren't quite able to hold New York off the second point. In the second round, London was able to hold off the Excelsior and capture the first point, starting their climb with their first win. Numbani was the fourth map, and things got dicey for London as New York felt quite at home on this map. Rascal came in, however, and London opened up with him on Fara, poking down the New York Excelsior. In typical Spitfire fashion, the entire time bank didn't matter, and they captured the point in overtime. Scarily, that wouldn't be their only point. Switching to defense, the Spitfire had a tall order in front of them, but if we learned anything from the London team, it's that when they're down, they're able to make clutch play or two to get them back in. With New York's final push being insanely close, they just weren't able to finish it off, and the London Spitfire tied up the series 2-2. The hard part was over for the Spitfire, as they had already beaten New York on Dorado earlier that day. London started out looking really smooth for the first two points, but New York quickly adapted and kept the Spitfire from getting the third. London had looked incredible on defense this series, and it didn't stop there. Their final fight against the New York Excelsior was incredibly tense, 
but they managed to pull it through and win the Stage 1 Overwatch League Championship with a reverse sweep. Honestly, we don't know if you could have asked for a better series to end the first stage of the Overwatch League. During this break, we should see some interesting changes as teams will be looking to make their way into the Stage 2 playoffs. Remember, the next games don't happen until the 21st of February, so enjoy your break. Thank you for joining us for this first stage of the Overwatch League recap. We'll be back on the 21st with a preview for the Stage 2 games, and then we'll have recaps coming back again to help catch you up with every game from that first week of games. As a reminder, you can find us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. Those links are listed below. Make sure you hit that subscribe button for more great content, and from our house to yours, Keep it here at the Game House for all your sports and esports needs.